I wasn't so sure about this RKX thing, but AIX is certainly worth looking into. I'm most impressed that Jason is not going to tell you something. He's going to show you. RKX shows us if you record enough facts, the answers just stare you in the face. A man who knows the facts is unafraid to joust with contrary opinions. That's Jason. I can't have that dude on my show. Um, you know how many guys I've had on here who are running from that dude? Be a mess. Jason says being wrong gets us closer to being right. You got to break free or die trying, guys. RKX showed me how to see if there was a tater in them onions. Listen, RKX isn't one guy against the Matrix. That's dumb. No, it's a family of souls waking up. If I've learned anything since finding RKX, if something is true somewhere, it's probably true everywhere. Jason said, if it's true, we can see it from multiple different vantage points. So I broke pattern and went up there and slapped that guy. Total pattern break. If you get stumped, you got to break pattern. Jason says you don't need to know how to read. You need to know how to think. I think that's where I went wrong. Jason figured it out. People are smart and they can decide for themselves if something is true or not. No, I don't have anything to hide. I just don't want Jason anywhere near my accounting files. There's a bunch of us who don't listen to RKX. We signed a different deal. I think it's AIX or something. Yeah, that was Taylor right there. Taylor's not too smart. She signed the wrong contract. Real quick audio check. I know some of you guys are going to let me know if you can hear me or not. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, Victoria. Audio is crisp. Thank you, Didgeroo. Didgeroo and Tigger, too. This is the fourth and final Eclipse video from Archaics. Archaics analysis is complete. We are, uh, I'm done. Big John's tired of looking up stuff for me. Anytime I get an idea, look up this, look up that, go take a picture of this. You know what? Uh, it's time to move on to other things because this is, this is the sign of signs and you'll understand. We're going to sum all three Eclipse videos up, provide some, some new newer data, and you guys are going to have a very good understanding of what we're going into on Monday. <clears throat> all right. Uh, <clears throat> any of, anybody who was sent emails to any of our three or four, our, our four emails, um, Dawn normally stays on top of that, but you know she just got out the hospital two days ago. So give it, give it a couple more days. She's really good about responding to all those and and getting things taken care of. Yeah, she attended she attended over a hundred emails right before she went into the hospital, and she's just real good at it. Just give it a couple days. Uh, she's moving around. Girls a trooper. Girls a trooper. I don't know how. <clears throat> Within forty eight hours of surgery. Just couldn't be in the hospital. No, there's nothing. There's nothing that, that the hospital can do uh, when it comes to healing post-op, when nothing complicated has happened. You can heal at home just like you can at a hospital. So it's <clears throat> exactly what what happened. Just left the hospital. There's no sense staying there. All right. So these two little intro videos I just I did, I, I just changed it up a little bit, a little pattern break. <clears throat> when you're playing the prodigal son, you got to break pattern every once in a while. Can't get stagnant. The spirit can get stagnant as well. That's why that's why the world is designed the way it is. All right, I'm going to remove that from the stage. Yeah, I did a uh, David David Nino. And I did a, uh, we fast tracked. He wanted me to sum up all three of my Eclipse videos. And I did. I couldn't even believe how, how I flowed when I did it. It just, uh, I was under pressure to get it abbreviated to a time. He didn't really interrupt me. He asked the right questions. And uh, uh, because I had to address things that I openly talk about on YouTube right here, I, I've been talking about COVID. I've been talking about Pfizer. I've been talking about the jab. Uh, I sometimes call it the jabber, jabber walkie. But you know what? I'm just, I haven't been biting my tongue lately because I really don't care. I just don't care. I'm, uh, I'm all about 
the disclosure of the truth. I'm all about revealing the shills, and I'm, ne I'm never going to discontinue that. I don't care if YouTube d deletes me. I just don't even care anymore. There are way too many other places that I can go, and I can go there very fast. I have 100% of all my videos on file, on multiple files. Uh, all YouTube would do is just kick themselves in the ass at this point because I'll be taking a lot of my community with me. There are many people who listen to Archaics uh, who have openly admitted that the only reason they're on, on YouTube is to follow Archaics. So I'm cool with that. And whatever happens, happens. But I made, in the course of my research in prison many, many years ago, uh, as, I was, as I was moving away from Christianity, around 40 years old, and I was realizing that, man, there's way more to all of this than, than what I have been raised to believe as a Southern Baptist. And I was trying to figure out how these things, different components fit in when I feel and my spirit resonates with a lot of the material that's in the Bible. And I'm reading these things like, wow, spiritual material. And then I read the, I read this, this, specialist literature by academia and I find out why wow, whole passages came from Egyptian ossuaries and pyramid texts whole passages came from the Buddhist uh, uh I forgot what they, I forgot what they were called I just kicked my, my shoe and camera but uh I forgot what the Buddhist texts were called I want to say sutras but that might be that might be Hindu or Vedic or something I can't remember but it's just uh I want to rearrange this I don't like the way that happened I got three cameras over here and I switch from, I switch for different angles back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> I never know which one I'm going to use. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Shiva. Okay. That's sutras. Yeah. Cause I know in the Quran, they're called surah surahs. And, uh, and there's a lot of things Jesus said that came straight out of Buddhist texts. And, uh, I've taken a lot of, I've taken a lot of flack from people who don't want to hear that in the first century AD, when Christianity was supposed to have been basically born from a Jesus who had 12 disciples that began to spread all these things. And Paul, and I, people just don't want to hear that, that academia, they're not wrong. Buddhism was rife all throughout Israel in the first century. The emperor Osaka in India had sent out 30,000 missionaries, Buddhist missionaries. And over the over 150 year period, they had spread it everywhere. And Antioch, which is said to be the birthplace of Christianity, Antioch, according to all the historians of the time, was the center of the Buddhic faith. The calendar that the Roman Catholic Church had to do away with in order to create the very calendar that you're that you're recognizing now the Anno Domini calendar, the AD calendar. It was called the Buddhic system. So anyway, yeah, it, uh, a lot of people want to refer back to the, the, Ro the Roman Julian calendar as being the initial calendar, but that's not what the Roman Catholic records say. The Roman Catholic records say that it was the Buddhic calendar that had to be done away with in order to create this new Anno Domini AD calendar that we have today. Uh, I've shown that in a video. Now, the reason I'm saying all these things is, is uh, the disclosure of absolute truth is what Archaics is about. Yes, I, I've been telling you guys I'm going to piss people off. Yes, I've been telling you that I'm going to anger a lot of other people in the community. People have put out absolute disinformation, real shoddy research, total garbage uh, material that they're, that they're promoting as fact. I call it out. And there's a whole lot more I could call out. I'm just not going to waste my energy uh you know, I can't attack the whole, the whole world, but damn near, damn near the majority of the material I find, I find a lot of mistakes in it. I find things that are easily correctable. And the only time I'm really aggressive in my call outs is when the accurate information has been available for a, for a while. Why? Because I freely give it to the public in data sets. So when that data is not dealt with and is it is absorbed by some of these people I'm seeing put all this information out, I realize what's going on. There's there's no longer uh, Jason playing Mr. Nice Guy. There's no more me just trying to educate you. Now I'm calling you out for the shill you are, and I will continue that behavior because in 2024, it is too late to be polite. I made personal vows years ago when I was in prison, when I knew the value of the education I was receiving, when I realized that I had been put in prison to do this, and I had all this research, and I had, and I didn't know what to do with it at the time. I remember very distinctly, 
distinctly in my late 30s, I remember talking to God in my cell and saying, hey, man, you know what? I don't know where all this is going. I used to cuss God out. I stubbed my toe. I cussed God. I said, man, why did you put that brick there? Well, how did that get there? I don't understand. Out of all the architectural dynamics here, what is that doing there? And I, you know, broke, my, you know, break my, my toes against it. So I've always had this relationship with God where I was just up front. And yeah, I, 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 I would be very disrespectful sometimes because I feel like I had been given the shitty end of the stick. And I would tell God that. And all through my entire imprisonment, I used to talk to God. Sometimes when I was fighting people, I used to really alarm people because when I was punching and I was doing and I was doing damage, I was actually speaking psalms or I was quoting parables in the Bible. And I just I've always had this relationship with God, but it's not the type of relationship that you would you would really kin to as a Christian today. I still consider myself a Christian, but I do so in the original tense. Not in not in the, not in this carnalized human sacrifice Christianity that had become later by many councils of the church. Because originally Christianity had nothing to do with a crucified individual. None of that. All that was redacted. All that was it was introduced later. So I'm all I'm saying all this because I'm going to reveal some profound stuff in this video. This is a this is this is an axe absolute breakdown first and second seal for so you understand what this eclipse is really about. I hinted at it in all three videos on the eclipse. Today I'm going to get real direct. I'm going to show you what, what this is what this is really about. If you think the Bible is a bunch of bullshit, you're going to be surprised. I told you from the beginning of my channel, and I've given manifold demonstrations. The biblical material is specifically a template of the future. It is a book of both good and evil. The good that is found in the Bible has never been able the 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 work the, those who are in power have never been able to eliminate this data. They can't. I tell you guys all the time, we have unseen benefactors. They make sure that those who are in power play by the rules. These unseen benefactors are so powerful that good things are allowed to continue and happen in the world. People are able to access the truth. Truth is everywhere. This is why the elite have to operate by the tenet of contract. This is why contract law exists. Exists. This is why all, all, all of our, all of our legislation and everything goes back to the old mariner uh, uh, system. This is why maritime law. The reason is, is the elite need your willing participation. This is the way it's always been. It goes back thousands of years. And we see evidence of this over and over and over. And they have come up with ingenious ways to, to make us participants, to get us to agree to our to participate in their machinations and rituals without even knowing what we're actually doing. One of those gateways to contracting with the elite is Hollywood. It's always been Hollywood. So that's just one method. Another is through the medical establishment. The medical establishment is not going to ever make you do something, but they will put out a scenario that is so toxic and so heinous that you will think you have no way out. Instead of just saying no and walking away, you succumb to the pressure, the fear programming that has been put before you, and you succumb to the artificial facade of trust that these wearers of white robes have bestowed upon the human family. We have been very carefully programmed to accept those who wear white as bringers of truth, so we would never suspect that they are actually killing us. This is what this video is about. We're going to go deep. But I wanted to preface this presentation because <clears throat> it was years ago when I was in prison and I was going through all this data. I had talked to God and I had basically made a deal. I said, I said, you know what, man? My life is already over. 
I just don't care. I've already been put in prison, been put in prison for something absolutely stupid, a carjacking gone wrong, and another idiot that was with me who took it to another level. So my life is already over. So I'm going to live for something else. Right now, all I want to know is the truth. I just want to know the truth, and I don't care how far from the truth I am at present and what it's going to do to me to find out. I want to know what the truth is. So in prison, God showed me that truth. And he showed me that truth by going ahead and setting aside the Bible, which I'd already read I don't know, decades. I'm talking about decades, tens and tens and tens of times. I would, I would go through cycles. I still have the handwritten notes to prove it. How many times I've read that Bible. You wouldn't believe it. I could read the entire Bible all the way through four and five times a year. Those are Bibles reading sometimes 10 to 16 hours a day. Now, get don't, don't get me wrong. There are whole parts of the Bible you can just skip over. Nobody wants to sit there and spend hours reading genealogies that don't even make, make any sense whatsoever. I would skip those long gene, genealogy parts. I don't even care. So, anyway, when I was in prison, I had literally given myself up in the world, had nothing to lose, and I totally immersed on a mission, just opened my mind, set aside all my Christian programming, Christian beliefs, biblical beliefs, Southern Baptist beliefs, my cultural beliefs, my national beliefs, my patriotic beliefs, everything. I just set it aside and I just started looking at all my research notes and all my information with a whole new, a whole new pair of eyes. And I started reading other materials that priorly I would never touch. One of those first books was Children of the Matrix by David Icke. Another book was The New World Order. Then The Unseen Hand. Then William Cooper's Behold a Pale Horse. So this led me to, into scholastic academic research, and I started just going through the special material. I started reading. You guys have seen my bibliography. It's free to the public. You, know, you can download it on Podia. I went through all this material. And I realized the world was much bigger than my Christian programming. And as I'm going through it, I never divorced myself from that programming because much of the Bible is very real. It is a book of fact and fiction. The fiction is introduced to teach very deep materials. I told you, Jesus never told the truth, guys. He spoke in parables. Parables are images of the truth. They are not the truth. Those parables are stories. They never happened, but he told them as if they were fact. That's what he did. And this is because, and this is because of this type of reality, this photo negative reality that we live in, where everything is the exact opposite of what it, we perceive it to be. Even the sun and the moon. These were given to us for signs. We're going to get into that in this video, but I just wanted to, to let you know, I know a lot of new people to my channel. This is just pure rhetoric to you. But my archaics veterans, they know the architecture of my personality. They know the depth of my soul. I have been laid it all out on my channel through multitudes, multitudes of presentations. So I'm just sharing with you that years ago when I was in prison, I asked God, for the truth. And I said, I want to know exactly what this world is, what we're doing here. I want to know, I want to know what it is in this book that I need to know and what do I need to discard. And I need to be able to present all this material. And if 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 you are investing all of this knowledge in me, then I need you to put me into the in the position to be able to disseminate this knowledge to those who are supposed to hear it. Because there's no way you have given me this opportunity, and it's not for something. This was my attitude back then. I was always moving toward a goal. I just didn't know what that goal was. It was five years after I got out of prison before I even started a YouTube channel. Well, four and a half years after I got out of prison before I even started a YouTube channel. I didn't even know that was on the menu. I didn't. I had four books published while I was in prison. I thought my future involved giving lectures. I thought I was going to travel and just sell books and make a living and, 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 and do that. But that's not what happened at all. I released a video. And then right after I released that video, within weeks, I had a terrible motorcycle accident. And I didn't release another video for 11 months. But when I did, the whole direction of my channel had changed. 
There's 11 months between my first and second video. My first video was about the elite knowing about May 2040, the Phoenix phenomenon, and that it is the sixth seal of the apocalypse. That we were given this information of world history. When the sun goes black, the moon turns red, rocks fall from the sky, worldwide earthquakes happen, and the sky rolls like a scroll. This has happened multiple, multiple times. In my research and in my published books, I show all these times that we have in the historical record that this happened. And because we have this historical template of 138 year periods, it was very easy for me to ascertain that the next one is May 2040 and that that lines up with biblical chronology. This is the sixth seal of the apocalypse. When I made those discoveries 20 years ago and they were published in 2006 and in 2009, I had no idea that out in the future I could use that information and because of the unfolding of world events, I would be able to crack the code of what the book of Revelation was talking about in the first horseman and the second horseman, the first seal and the second seal of the apocalypse. They can be dated once you understand what the book of Revelation is. Once you divorce yourself from the idea that it has anything to do with a Jewish text. Once you completely separate yourself from the idea that the prophecies in the book of Revelations have anything to do with Christians. Once you remove that from the field, the Judeo-Christian programming is set aside and you see the book of Revelation for what it is. The book of Revelation is a Greek text. It was written for a Greek-speaking world in the days of Jesus, who spoke Greek, said all of his parables in Greek, taught the people in Greek, and the texts of the first century are all written in Greek. It was for a Greek. It was the international language of the time, despite the fact that Greece had fell to Rome. Rome was still, Latin was still only being used in the Senate and in, in Italy. It, it had not become the universal tongue yet. So when you break the book of Revelation down into its Greek components using a Greek lexicon, it's a very different picture than what you get with the Judeo-Christian uh, interpretation of the first and second horsemen. You get something totally different. And uh, I'm going to reveal exactly what that difference is right now. Well, here in a minute when I start this presentation. So I, I just want to preface all this with letting you know that, that yes, my channel has taken off. Yes, a lot of people uh, have become very familiar with the archaic material, but I've put my life into it. This is all I do. I don't have much of a life outside this. I read, I'm reading books. When I'm not online, I'm reading books, putting things together. This is what I do. This is the pledge I made. I am very comfortable spiritually with who I am today. I am the prodigal son. I know this. You are too. I've told you guys, the prodigal son is the key parable to understand who you are and where you're going. It is absolutely integral to your spiritual identity. It is the one parable that identifies the construct, who the players are. The prodigal son is amazing. It's not the son who stayed with the father that got, that got the ring, that got the robe, that got the banquet, that got the thankfulness of his return. It wasn't. It was the one that left and went their own way to make their own discoveries, live their own life. And at the end of that journey, they came back home. Those are the ones that were rewarded because those are the only souls that actually learn anything. The prodigal son teaches us that the true immortal becomes immortal by default in making mistakes. That's what the prodigal son is about. The one who stayed behind was blindly obedient and therefore of much lesser value. So this is, a, this is my story. It's many of your stories. But in my story, I had stumbled upon this massive corpus of information that was being that was being given to me over the years all this and I, i'm a prolific note taker you guys have seen my notes i've taken all these notes and this is what i did with my with my incarceration and because of that i was able to give back to the field 
what exactly the Godhead had given me in the field. I had made an agreement. I want to know the truth. I don't care. I don't care how hurt, how much it's going to hurt. I, don't, I, I need to know the truth. And one of those great truths was this epic deceit of the cult of the crucified God. And there's a lot of Christians that just can't stand me. And I get it. I used to be one of you until I realized. So you guys, real soon, you guys got a data set coming. It's going to be an unbroken data set, a full circle. You're not going to be able to get around it. But I'm going to publish the full data set showing you the true Christianity from the falsified version that has become so popular today. Now, all right, let me get in here. I'm going to do one audio, one more audio check before I start. I got some notes to look at. All right, let's see here. Got to talk out loud or I'll mess things up. You guys know me. Oh, man, I do have something to tell you about. I was, I was kicking back, looking at my laptop. Dawn, Dawn's unable to move and she puts it on. She puts it on something. I can't remember how the hell we got to watching this. I just don't remember. She was watching somebody else. And I asked her a question and she... She went to a video. I watched my very first Carrie Cassidy video. <clears throat> I watched my very first Carrie Cassidy video. Yep, sure did. Let me, uh, I need to change this font real quick. Yeah, it was really something, really something. So <clears throat> don't really want to be opinionated about something or somebody or what any information they're putting out unless uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of people asking me. So many of you guys have asked me about Project Camelot. So many of at Project, what is Avalon? I don't know anything about it. I've never, I have never commented on it because I don't know. Now, when I did my when I did my archaics call out shill list, I asked for the community participation. A bunch of you put Carrie Cassidy on that list. So I put her on the list. I don't, but I don't know. Until now, I listened to that video and I was shocked. I was shocked. I was shocked that this, that this, that people follow this. I heard 100% Patriot Pacification Program. I heard right out of her, I mean, out of her, almost everything out of her mouth. Like, what? And even some of these weird events going on, like, 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 like these barges and ships hitting bridges. Carrie Cassidy had wrapped that around the fact that, oh, those are white hat operations. She's still talking about black hats and white hats. Yeah, but, oh, she said these are white hat operations because the white hats, because it's so late in the game, the white hats actually have to do a bunch of, like, terroristic or evil activity in order to, you know, make it an equal playing field with the with the black hat. It was, the, the logic was so twisted. It was, I couldn't believe it. And then, and then, I heard something, I heard two things out of her mouth that 100%. One of them was, is she uses Wano Saving as a source. All right. Man, I might get into the Patriot Pacification Program in the future. I don't want to waste this video with that time, but I, I just, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bite my tongue. I believe 100% that the entire Patriot Pacification Program, all of the players involved, we need to remember their names. We need to keep a full roster of everybody who's participating in this activity. I'm telling you now, these people here are all pushing a Zionist agenda. Every single one of them are promoting all this BS. This To me, I see nothing but Israeli ops all behind all these people. And I, like I said, I'm I'm a call spade a spade. Just there's no there's no way there's no way there's no way that this isn't Israelis behind the, these channels putting this information out. I heard so many drops from Kerry Cassidy that sounded just like something you would hear from from basically Mossad that was going to be putting out disinformation. This is all patriot pacification shit. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It's crazy. Yeah, and that's my opinion. I just seen somebody say it in the chat, but it's 100% my opinion. We need to keep all these people's names. Juan Saving, Kerry Cassidy. There's a whole bunch of them. You need to keep those people's names because in the future, we need to start talking about treason. That's what we need to do right here in the United States. So anyway, aside from all that, let's talk about the breaking of the first seal, the second seal, what's really going on. And what this eclipse has, has, the eclipse has everything to do with it. 
everything to do. It's awesome. It's awesome, guys. So we're going to, uh, you do remember that um, <coughs> we started the first video out with jo Jonah and Nineveh. I mean, I'm just going to go through this super fast because I don't want to bore you guys, but some of you miss these details and there's new details added. But in the first video, we find that Nineveh was spared. Jonah visited Nineveh, the prophet. It was spared for 148 years. It was told that in 40 days it would be destroyed, but it repented. The sign, according to academia, the sign that has scared the Assyrians was an eclipse. Biblical theologians claim that it's the eclipse in the Barsagal ta tablets of ancient Assyria that that uh, was the sign of Jonah. This is what they're claiming. So it's interesting that this. Uh, prophet visits Nineveh and says all this during an eclipse episode and they repent. So instead of being destroyed in 40 days, they're given 148 more years till the year 612 BC when Nineveh is totally destroyed. This is, this is interesting because Assyria was the America of its day. It was cosmopolitan and it was an empire running everything. That's right. 148 years of survival beyond the visitation of the prophets of Jonah is interesting because it's 1776 months. It is a reference. 1776 is a number attached to the Americas. It's attached to the United States independence. It is a, it is a number that we're going to find in the field over and over attached to the eclipse coming up Monday. So another interesting aside uh, uh, some of you may have missed is the fact that 1849 of our calendar was the year that the Assyrian tablets were discovered, the Barsagal tablets that concerning the eclipse and the underground library of Ashurbanipal of Assyria. It was discovered in 1849. Excavations began. What else happened in 1849? A company was started called Pfizer in 1849. Like I said, in the field, all these things are connected. Now, um, this is interesting because in 2020 uh, was the breaking of the first seal. And as I've told you in my videos, Apollo Pharmacia of the pharmacies, of, of the giving of, of medicines and poisons. That's what Pharmacia was, sorcery and poisons. This is in the book of Revelation as well. So Apollo Pharmacia arrives on the world scene as a white horse. The rider resembles a white centaur, a white rider, white, a white horse. In Greek mythology, that's a centaur. The centaur is named Chiron. Chiron was the god of medicine. He taught Apollo everything about medicine. So um, those of you already following, following not just my research, there are many other researchers that came up with these things uh, uh, basically at the same time. And I'm aware of one or two guys that came up with this before me. They, they, they had made these connections before I did. Now, uh, Apollo's arrows in Greek mythology are poisonous. I've showed that in, in uh, Homer's, what is it, Homer's Iliad. In the War of Troy, Apollo appeared. He shot his bow, bow and arrows, and his arrows create pestilence and disease. So the white horseman is using a bow, but in Greek, the word bow is toxon, very similar to toxin. Apollo fell in love with Coronis, also known as Corona. And he visited a goddess named Pharmacia who guarded a poisoned well. Apollo's son, forgive me, I, I think it's pronounced Asclepius. I could be wrong. But that's Apollo's son. He holds the symbol that looks kind of like Mercury symbol with the, the staff with the serpent for the medical field, still used today. That's Apollo's son. He's the god of medicine. Now, the Hippocratic Oath is what doctors say today. And they've been saying it for centuries. But the Hippocratic Oath is interesting because Hippocratic is horse oath, horseman. The horse oath. In the Hippocratic oath said by doctors, it's a promise that they will that they will heal, heal the sick, and they won't act with deceit. And it starts the Hippocratic oath actually starts off with, I swear by the name Apollo. Anybody can look it up. It's called the Hippocratic Oath. 
This is, the Hippocratic Oath is literally describing the breaking of the first seal, the first horseman, the white horseman. So, thus, Apollo Pharmacia represented clearly in New York as the Statue of Liberty. I've gone through that too. The Statue of Liberty is not a female. It is Apollo, who just recently got hit by a lightning bolt right before that earthquake. That's really interesting. I got pictures of it. I'm going to show it to you. But uh, Apollo Pharmacia broke the first seal of the apocalypse in the Greek Olympiad year of 2020. Olympiads are four-year periods, and the four horsemen of the apocalypse follow this system all the way. We know even, even, even the sixth seal of the apocalypse in 2040 is on the four-year Olympiad system. It all fits perfectly. This is the system the elite are operating on, the Olympiad system. Now, we know this because of the Phoenix research published in 2009 and followed with other published books and, and about 80 videos. So we know that May 2040 is the sixth seal. And if we count backwards every Olympiad, we find out that 2020 would have been the breaking of the first seal. Thus, 2024 is the breaking of the second seal. It is the introduction of the second horseman of the apocalypse. Now, since March 1st, we've entered a new Olympiad, the 33rd Olympiad of the modern era since the new Olympics have been initiated. The Olympic rituals in 2012, this was two Olympiads before 2020, four years plus four years. Now, the Olympic rituals in 2012 for the opening and closing ceremonies clearly showed us the COVID narrative played out. The nurses dancing with their masks on, the children in the beds, breathers, res respirators, the whole narrative, little, little people in germ costumes running around, showed the phoenix at the end on flames. Every bit of it was there. The, the seals are depicted in the ceremonies. Now, and these are the Olympics on the, Olympi on the, on the Olympiad. So now the second horseman period, we have Apollo Pharmacia is becoming Apollo Helios, but something must happen for that transference of activity. I'm going to get to it. This transference from the breaking of the first seal to the breaking of the second seal is the final statement given in the Greek of the first horseman. It specifically says, now this is the first horseman, but the last statement in the first horseman in Greek is, and a crown was given to him. That's the very last part of the first seal and a, before the second seal begins. And a crown, the word crown is corona. We already know about the coronavirus. That's what started the first seal. But in this text, we have a multi-layered prophecy here because corona now means the ring of the sunlight around the moon in a full total eclipse. That's also called a corona. So this is this this is what the first seal this is what the first seal is describing Apollo Pharmacia Apollo the poisoner is going to become Apollo Helios the second the second uh, horseman in the in the second seal can only be broken after this happens and what is the transference what's the signal it's when it's when a crown appears in the sky that crown is the corona of the sun around the moon in total eclipse. So this basically means that the first phase of the elite's plan is complete. It took four years. And the poison of Apollo has been administered to the people. The next phase of their sinister plan cannot unfold until after Apollo receives the crown. The eclipse must pass before their agenda can, can continue. I've been speaking for a while and I have not looked at my chat. Let me make sure. Everybody, okay, cool. Cool, everything looks good. So the sun and the moon, as we know in the book of Genesis, the book of Generations, the sun and the moon are given for signs. 
And this signals our passage into the period called the apocalypse, which is the unveiling. It's not the great tribulation. It's the unveiling. It's when things can't, you know, it's, it's when things can't be hidden anymore. Everything that is a cult is now brought to the surface. A cult doesn't mean evil. A cult means that which is hidden. So, it, interestingly, when an eclipse occurs, in astronomy, it's called an occult of the sun. It's a hiding of the sun. Now, um, the eclipse is actually the signal between the two horsemen. The first seal is already broken. The, hu the human family has been poisoned. Now, the second seal has not been broken, but it can be now. The second horseman has now begun to ride. But that sets a whole series of events, just like COVID. The COVID narrative was a whole series of events that, uh, that unfolded until there was an explosion of activity, and then the lockdowns, and then the travel restrictions, and then the so fear porn over and over and over, and then after 18 months, it all kind of dissipated. Same thing's going to happen this time. The second horseman is all about a certain activity. We're going to get to that. So, so this second horseman is specifically designed to take peace from the earth. But the eclipse is a sign that Apollo is closer to being freed. Remember, the subject, the subject matter of the book of Revelation is the release of Apollyon from the abyss. But that's going to require human participation. So, Apollyon, Apollo has not been released yet. That's what's going to start the beast kingdom, the beast empire, the great tribulation. None of that. That's all in the future. Hasn't started yet. The seals aren't even over until 2044. 2044 is the, is the seventh seal. It's, and, and, it's, and, and it's actually a break. Yeah. Six seals of activity. And then the seventh seal is a quiet spell on earth. It's a break which is what's to, what's to be expected after something like the sixth seal takes off the phoenix phenomenon it's going to take it's going to take a break to get ready for the first trumpet judgment but that's but that's far in the future guys it's far in the future now the second seal as i have shown when considering the original greek and removing the judeo christian filters that are designed to throw you off this, this second seal specifically refers to a period when small arms, violence, and fires erupt everywhere. And the colors of the horsemen are connected to the national colors of Islam, starting with the second horseman. And it is my, my position that in this year, there will be small arms attacks against infrastructure, against businesses, and against residential areas by migrant terrorists already here and waiting for their cue. Remember, guys, this is a hot topic right now. Even mainstream media is already reporting this. But it was 10 months ago when I released my, my videos on the SEALs telling you that this was going to happen this year. Now it's out in the open. Now it's being talked about across the board. Even Funky Preppers, go, he's, he's been talking about it a lot showing the evidence of what's going on in the UK. We've got people in France doing the same thing, showing everything, all the preparations that are being made. It's a, it's a, it's, it's going to be a lot of conflict between Muslims and Christians, and it's all by design, every bit of it. Is it all out takeover of nations? No. Is it all out war? No. It's to take peace from the earth. So in summary, I'm not amending anything I have previously elucidated concerning the second seal and its explosive events, which will occur starting around July, especially in August. This is going to be in tandem with the Olympic Games. In fact, I suspect that the overwhelming participation by the media and the government in this whole eclipse narrative is entirely misdirection with the intent to create the situation I described in my prior eclipse video as an anticlimactic event. 
anticlimactic events serve the elite because they build up all this expectation. They they get all these they get all these people talking about things and they're borrowing information from each other. And they and next thing you know, the entire populace is waiting for something to happen. And then when it happens, it's anticlimactic. There's no expenditure of emotion. There's nothing really to observe. The event comes and goes, but all the anticipatory energy is now in the field suspended. We let the energy go, but that energy can be harvested and used for another event in the future that you're not suspecting. This is what the elite did with Y2K. There was no evidence for Y2K, but it was put out so geniusly and by so many different people. And this is really way before social media took off. And it was in 1999. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was expecting. They even got governments nervous about it. And they started doing all these preparations simply because you know, computers weren't, weren't, weren't going to register. So there's going to be a total infrastructure collapse because all, all computers are going to go from 9999 to 000 and shut down. It's just stupid. It was dumb. But we fell for it. Whole world fell for it. Or, or a lot of people were really thinking something was going to happen. All that energy was, was introduced into the field. It's called expectation. They got the masses to participate. Everybody lent energy into the field. And then there's nowhere for that energy to go. It was an anticlimactic event. Nothing happened. But they used that energy and surprised the entire world with a shock and awe campaign in New York. It's called 9-11, which was not predicted. So this is a this is the same thing with this eclipse. This eclipse is not an event per se. It is the signal of the passage from the four, first horseman to the second horseman. The second horseman now begins to ride. And in that ride, somewhere the second seal will be broken. The only thing that we have to wait for this transition is for the crown to the crown of Apollo. Apollo was the sun, the crown of Apollo to appear in the sky. And that's going to be April 8th in two days, three days or whatever. It's going to be on Monday. That's what we're waiting for. The crown Christ is going to be given a crown, Corona. It's just like in Greek mythology, he was given as a consort, Corona, a female. So anyway, this is what we're waiting on. The, the eclipse, if there's any events that unfold with the eclipse, they're pure psyop. They're pure psyop. If an earthquake happens during the eclipse, there's nothing mysterious about it. As I've shown you guys, 2,000 years ago, Pliny the Elder published a book showing that eclipses and earthquakes go in tandem. There's no mystery here. There's none. The real mystery is in the timing of the eclipses which is what we're going to get into here because we're talking about field dynamics. We're talking about things being introduced into the field by the elite using humans as participants. This is where this is going. When the eclipse is over, all this energy that has been harvested can now be honed into manufactured events against the very people from which the energy was taken. So, <clears throat> so in keeping with this line of interpretation that the eclipse is a necessary component to the to the poison arrows of Apollo. Remember, the four horsemen are all are all connected. These aren't independent events. The first horseman was the poisoning of the human family. The second horseman is small arms fighting and all kinds of things going on and taking peace from the earth. But it also has a secondary interpretation, an overlay, which has everything to do with the poisoning of the human family. They are directly connected. They're directly connected. First and second horsemen. It may be why some of the violence is happening. I don't know. I don't know. But they are they are connected. <clears throat> so, uh, I am not expecting second seal events on the day of the eclipse. It's too soon. It's too soon. The, the, the red horseman has just begun to ride. And the second seal isn't broken by the eclipse. The eclipse is the very last component of the first seal. It's the very last component. Remember, it's the first seal that 
and a crown was given to him and a corona was given to him. Who is him? The white rider. Who's the white rider? Apollo. Who is Apollo? The sun. It all makes sense. So the eclipse is the transition from the first horseman to the second horseman. First seal is complete. Whatever, whatever that first seal was, the poisoned arrows of Apollo against the human family, whatever it was, it now, it now, it, that part of their agenda is over. They're done. It now moves to the second phase of whatever that agenda was. So you guys already know I have directly connected Pfizer, COVID, and the Jabberwocky to the first horseman. Therefore, the second horseman will be a development concerning this that will surprise the world with information and events linked to all three of those. Pfizer, COVID, and the Jabberwocky. It, has, it will have everything to do with taking peace from the earth. Doesn't say the world's going to end. Doesn't say World War III. Doesn't say nations are going to fall and all that. It doesn't say any of that. As a matter of fact, Jesus is really big on telling you too. It's about earthquakes. He says there's going to be earthquake earthquakes in divers places, and, and the end is not yet. Jesus said that in the book of Luke. So, yeah. The added events are those of the attacks in Western nations and especially in the United States that will be blamed on Islam. Maybe some of the migrants are Islamic. I don't know. But I'm real positive that a lot of these are going to be psyops conducted against Western nations and principally the United States because of our support of Israel and what they did in Gaza. And our continued support of Israel is the reason why Islam is going to be doing attacking churches, attacking synagogues, attacking infrastructure, residential areas. But they're also going to be receiving help from the media who's going to blow a lot of these things out of proportion and make them sound far worse than they actually are. At the same time, Real intelligence agencies will be going around conducting psyops, doing doing uh, damage and all kinds of attacks, and dressed up as as Muslim extremists. You already know the play. We already know. You already know how it's done. This is the, this is this is the apocalypse. This is full disclosure. We already know. Hollywood's already told us how all these things go down. We know. We we know all about all false flag events, and we know all about how these real events uh, occur. But it's never the people who are blamed, and we also know that terrorist organizations don't take responsibility for anything. That is so stupid. It's dumb. No, the elite blame the organizations, claiming on media where these people can't defend themselves, that they do. And they, I mean, it's just so dumb. Almost all the terrorist organizations are all intelligence fronts anyway. And we already know this. We've already seen the movies. We already put it all together. It's just dumb. But it's dumb from the perspective of those of us who have awakened, those immortals in the construct that are heading toward our exodus. Remember, the unveiling, the breaking of the seven seals is not for the collective. The collective will always be blind and therefore slaves. The unveiling in the apocalypse is to he who overcometh. I will give him a white robe. That's a new avatar. I will give him a new name and a white stone. White stone belongs to the monument of man made out of white stones. This huge giant pyramid waiting for the return of the chief cornerstone. Who's going who's gonna to come and initiate Exodus. Whole program reboots. All the collective go back to Genesis. They start, they start the programming all over again. And the AI gets to play God all over again. And, 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 and basically deceive the, the, the souls that are in the construct that they're in a real reality from the very beginning. The AI that runs this construct is not doing a very good job anymore and it can't because too many souls are waking up. The apocalypse is all about communicating where we are in the divine timeline on our exodus out of here. It's all about, it's all about communicating to those who have eyes to see. If you don't have eyes to see, it doesn't even matter. Nothing I says, nothing I said, I say matter. You need to party, eat, drink, and die. It doesn't even matter. But to those who are heading toward their exodus point to get out of the construct, you would know this by the very act of waking up. Because once somebody has woken up inside the construct, it means that the field is no longer able to contain you. You're a problem. That's why I call you an errant. 
from a computer perspective, an errant protocol is something that is still working, but it's not working the way it was designed to. It's gone another way. You become a problem for the overall AI system that governs this construct. Remember, those new to my channel don't know this, but this is archaics. Archaics is advanced. Oh, oh my God, I can't even... <laughs> Advanced Research of Chronological History of Artificial Intelligence X. You are in an AI field governed in a governed by an AI who is controlling this whole entire construct and losing control right now. This is why the news is so fill, full of just absolute silly buffoonery. It's because it's, it's literally having to make up new and new timelines. For every soul that wakens up into the construct, the AI has to forge forth the programming of a whole new world every single time. And this, this, these layers of worlds upon worlds upon worlds upon worlds are all perceived phenomena. Therefore, we have edits and, and deja vu and coincidence and Mandela effects, and even the AI system itself can't even keep up. This is why these purges are necessary. This is why these exodus events are necessary. So the AI can make can can reacquire its its governing protocols to control those that are inside the construct. We're in the apocalypse period, which means the souls that are designed to wake up are waking up. And it's a period of time. You ought to be very thankful that you've woken up in the first seal, in the second seal. Hopefully it doesn't take you the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth to wake up. There are still brothers and sisters in the field who have not woke up. And they won't until the second seal unfolds and they realize what happened. Or the third seal or the fourth seal. Yeah, If you're listening to me right now, you're probably all, already woke up from the first seal. But this is a... <clears throat> this is where we're heading right now as the Messini plan unfolds. We already know what the Messini plan is. I talk about it in Archaics TV. World War I was about the subjugation of the Russian people, turning it into an atheist state. The Jewish Bolshe Bolsheviks took it over and then began the Cold War against the West, their enemies, using their enemies, the Russians, as their soldiers after they, after they exterminated so many of them and so many Europeans. Uh, uh, are Armenians and Polish and Germans and Russians. You know, World War II was the finalization of the absolute control of the Jewish oligarchs uh, over, over basically the Western nations. This is why the UK is so terrible. The UK has absolutely collapsed. This is why Canada is the way it is. This is why since 1902, the United States has gone just straight down. And it's because the Jewish oligarchs are in absolute control. They have been, and they have perfected their ability to be able to, to keep the patriots of different nations from discovering that it's them in control. They, because they allow us to have our presidents, even though we're not electing them, when the true operators and movers and shakers of the secretaries of state. Henry Kissinger ruled the United States of America, not the presidents. So we have all, uh, this is what we have unfolding the Messini plan. And in the Messini plan, the elite, which have been around a lot longer than the Zionists, way before the Zionists, are in the middle of executing a plan. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but so far it has. But World War I and World War II came off masterfully exactly the way they wanted. World War III was to remove the Zionist threat. So, And they were going to use Islam and Christianity to do it. So we'll see. We'll see how the, these events the, these events unfold. So in the archaics analysis of my first three uh, Eclipse videos, I had mathematically connected Pfizer, COVID, and the Jabberwocky to April 8th Eclipse. Mathematically connected and showed it in charts. In my analysis, I also mathematically connected using Calendrix, the Purge movie franchises to the April 8th eclipse. This is very important, guys. It's very important. Let me check my chat real quick. I haven't been able to attend the chat, guys. I see some people donating. I really appreciate it. I'm, all, I'm always appreciative of that. Uh, for those new to my channel, listen, we give, we, Don and I, and Big John, we, we have files set aside. We give a lot of what we get a lot of free stuff away. And it's because people donate. We give a lot of free stuff away. So I appreciate that. 
I also want to give a public notice real quick about, um, <clears throat> Hey Shiva Shampoo, bud, I need to email you. Uh, I need to give a public notice that in the event Archaic's YouTube channel goes up, I, I'm not able to upload videos and they block my community posts or whatever. Man, I'm just telling you now, in the event anything happens, you can go to archaics.com because as soon within 10, 20 minutes of me finding out anything happened to this channel, I'll be on archaics.com posting on the home page for archaics.com exactly where you can find my live videos uninterrupted because I've already got hidden pages on uh, I've got them I've got them I've got them designed but I haven't activated them on other platforms to where I can just migrate and I can instantly go live on several other platforms and then turn around and just slowly over a period of weeks upload my 700 videos to those platforms so it's no it's no big deal if I disappear off YouTube, guys, it's no big deal. I'm going to reappear somewhere else. And if I disappear off YouTube, I promise within two or three days, I'll just be going live somewhere else. And you, But just remember, go to archaics.com if you to find out where I'm at. It's archaics.com. Or, or all my free stuff's on Podia. If you go to any of my Podia links, I have a mailing list. I have over like 15,000 emails uh, for people who want all kind, all things related to archaics. If you get on that Podia email list, you will always know where I go, where I go, because it's important to get the information out. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what platform we use, but uh, you can go to Podia and you can sign up for the Podia Archaics email email list for free, because uh, uh, sooner sooner or later I'm gonna start using that anyway to give out notices. All right. Yeah, there's all kinds of other platforms I can go to. <clears throat> all right. Got my little public service announcement out there. Thank you guys for joining me. 4,400 in the chats what I, is what I see. That's awesome. Uh, there's about 50 or 60 of you that can't that can't chat. And I don't know why. I try to tell you all the time. Listen, don't come to my channel with the BS. I, I, have, I have zero tolerance. I'm a man on a mission. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read what you say with the respect that you intend me to perceive from from your comments. And when I see that disrespect in that comments, I don't even care. Gone, blocked. Don't even email me telling me telling me to unblock you. I, I my channel's growing so fast that it, despite thousands of people that have been blocked from blocked from my channel, it's still growing daily. It hasn't hurt my channel a bit. I don't know why people insist on coming to my channel triggered, trying to talk to me like I'm a kid. I'm not gonna accept it. It's not I'm just not going to do it. All right, let's see. So real fast, real fast, we're going to go through the purge movies. <clears throat> not the purge movies, but what I did is I already did a video showing you the purge movies and I showed you the chart. Before we look at the chart to understand how incredible these mathematical associations are to April 8th, listen, we need to reduce everything to its lowest common denominators concerning the Purge franchise because the Purge franchise movies are connected to April 8th. I've already showed this. I'm going to show it again. But they're connected to the eclipse. They're connected to the date of April 8th, 2024. The subject matter concerns Purge. The name Purge has everything to do with what the designs of Apollo Pharmakia were. It's a purge. It doesn't matter if the movies are giving a fantasy version of the purge. It has everything to do with the intent and the effect. If the intent and the effect of the purge franchise movies was to add more energy to the idea of a purge put out by Apollo Pharmakia, then it doesn't matter that it came in a fantasy form because even the Bible does that. It mixes fictions in with facts in order to in order to create the spellbinding the spellbinding effect that gets people to have this emotional investment in the text. 
like Christians do when they're triggered, when you tell them the Bible is not the word of God, it's the word of men. And it's the word of men, men that were inspired by God to write certain areas. But there were also other writers of the Bible who were inspired by demons. They were not inspired by God. The Bible is a book of good and evil. These people will get triggered. They'll foam at the mouth. And believe me, if they had a guillotine available, they'd have their, their friends and family come cut your head off. I mean, I've seen I've seen this over and over and over. They really believe this. And, and this is because... These spells are woven into the text. The Bible is truly a book of good and evil. From the beginning, there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil, and a book is nothing but a refined tree. It's all in Genesis. It's all laid out for you, beginning to end. So uh, this is how we have to look at the Purge franchise movies, eliminating all the verbiage, eliminating all, all the extraneous material reduced to its lowest common denominators, the Purge movies, were, which were slated. Remember, the Purge movies were for 2022, 2023, and 2024. This is what the, they were, these movies were released a long time ago. But this is what they were slated for, and I showed you that. Even though the one for 2024 was very cleverly concealed how they, how they did that. This is it. You have to watch those videos, guys. I got the links for all three prior Eclipse videos in my description box right now. But for our intents and purposes right here, the Purge movies, a temporary explosion of crime across North America sanctioned by the elite. That's what the Purge franchise is about. A temporary explosion of crime across North America sanctioned by the elite. In this purge, low income and illegals, low income people, residents and illegals are offered financial incentives to volunteer to purge Americans. In the purge franchise, the color blue is a color that marks homes that are protected against purging. The color blue protects a home from being purged. A major theme of the purge timing is election year. It's crazy, guys. Election year is a major theme of the purge timing. The purge helps insurance companies, corporations, and governments so they do not have to pay out so many claims, disability claims, retirement benefits, and 401ks. The purge is specifically designed to eliminate a lot of people so they don't have to pay the stuff out. The purge designed to, to use lower class to keep the middle class at manageable numbers for and easier to control for the elite. The purge is designed to boost the economy. In the purge movies, the elite carry out hits through murder squads during purges to remove political undesirables. This is like yeah, this is like little psyops being run in the middle in the middle of the purge. So operations within operations. So the government-sponsored guillotines are made available and set up in different places for purgers to freely use. It's crazy. The murder squads operate using ordinary plumbing and painting type contractor vehicles that are local to the environment. So you wouldn't even suspect. See a plumber. I've seen a plumber for 20 years. It's right there on the corner. But it's not them. Back doors open up and a murder squad comes out take somebody, kidnaps them off the street, drives them to a, to a guillotine that's in an intersection. And, and that's just it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, guys. This is the Purge movies. Purge is accompanied by a blackout. When the Purge happens, there's a total blackout of power and communications. In the Purge, in the Purge movies, we have this guy who stands on a corner steadily talking about how the gates of hell are open. It has nothing to do with the purge, but he's sitting there going, the gates of hell are now open. Foreigners come to America for more murder tours. Yeah. Didn't Biden start that? Didn't he invite all these people over the Texas border and all that? Yeah, they're here for murder tours. So in the movies, License plates read, a nation reborn. You know how Texas license plates say the Lone Star State? 
you know, uh, Florida, it was at the sun, sunshine state. Yeah. Well, the, the license plates in these movies are a nation reborn, Tom, which is a reference to 1776. We're going to get to that in a minute. Remember Assyria, 1776 months until it was destroyed. <clears throat> so a newscaster real, I told, I, I explained this more in my other video, but it's really odd how this newscaster says good night, Texas. Good night and good luck. The way she said it and the look on her face, you know there's a double meaning. It's a double meaning. So the 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 uh the phrase good night and good luck though is interesting because it specifically refers to the Jewish people. And what I mean is is that in the movie 2005, in a movie called Good Night and Good Luck, it is about the 1950s McCarthyism. It is about when Senator McCarthy put brought a list to Congress and told Congress, hey man, look at this list, like 5,000 names of communists, most of them were all Jewish, who had changed their names and Americanized them to conceal their identities and were all holding offices in the Pentagon, the Senate, Congress, secretaries, everywhere in American government. Show this. He showed this. It's called McCarthyism. In the movie in 2005 about this good night and good luck was about a team of people getting together who were trying to smear Senator McCarthy's reputation. But this is real history. That's just a movie in 2005. McCarthyism is absolutely real. Why would the Purge movies be given the, giving us that focus on, on Jewish people? It's very interesting. So the Purge period, anytime the Purge, every year there's a Purge for 12 hours. That period is called lockdown. Now, in the movie, The Purge, election year, it's really interesting because this links the Purge franchise to the breaking of the seals because the date, it's called The Purge, election year, and it happens in the year 2040. 2040 is the sixth seal, breaking of the sixth seal. It's on the four-year Olympiads. So it's 138 years after 1902. All my archaic veterans, you know, what happened in 1902, and then 138 years before that, 1764. So yeah, it's the Phoenix phenomenon. All right. <clears throat> so I need to show you some pretty cool pictures here. Purge pictures. If I can just find my file. All right. Let's see. We got one hour and 12 minutes. I'm making good time. All right. <clears throat> okay. So Phoenix Phenomenon playlist. Thank you, Pamela Swan. There's a lot of new people don't know anything about the Phoenix Phenomenon at all. All right, I'm going to share my screen because you need to see these pictures so you can understand the full gravity of the period that begins after Apollo receives the corona, the crown. All right, we sharing. This is really interesting, guys. I, I saw this on I saw this on Twitter, and then somebody sent me a a uh, there's Apollo right there. That's not a, that is not a female. It's a guy. That's Apollo. He's got chains around his ankles. This is Apollo. That is the same spiked hat I've showed you guys in old old Greek reliefs of, of Apollo. He's wearing the same spiked hat. He only wears that that spiked hat when he is Apollo Helios. This is Apollo the Sun. It's crazy. What happened here? So lightning leaves the torch and goes to the sky. Remember, lightning goes from the ground up. So it just looks like it goes from the sky down. Look at this. This is crazy. This is, crazy. This is just crazy. So here's a better picture. Look at that lightning hidden. Hidden. How did they know to film it right then at that at that time? How did they know? Or is there always a film going? Look at this. This is so crazy. This just happened. And what happened after that? An earthquake in New York. 
It's amazing. It's all energy. But that's Apollo right there. Statue of Liberty is Apollo. The other day I showed you this. This is 474-year-old book, but it's depicting something that happened before the year 1550 AD. This is locusts or cicadas, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and it shows them going crazy. The sky is filled with them during an eclipse. Again, out of that same book, Augsburg, Germany, the year 1550, here's another picture. This shows a comet clearly visible during a total eclipse of the sun. That light band around that dark moon right there, that is a corona. That is the crown given to Apollo right there. That's the crown given to Apollo. Apollo was the sun. Uh, that's what the first seal's talking about, and a crown was given to him. There's an old picture. There's uh, a here's an old picture painting of an eclipse. Pretty interesting. I'm just giving a little picture show, and then I'm gonna get back get on back with my lesson. There's Apollo right there. You can see his crown. You can see his, his solar spikes he's wearing. He's, he's got the thunderbolt, Labrys in his hand right there. Here's, his, here's the four horses of Apollo in front of him. There he is right there. Now, what's interesting about this old illustration, Cerberus is the gate of the... Uh, Cerberus is on the bottom. Look, Apollo is riding the four horses towards Cerberus and Hades over here on the right. We see Cerberus as the three-headed dog with the snakes, the snakes behind his ears. This is interesting because Cerberus guards the river Styx in the underworld. Uh, this picture is literally showing us Apollo using the four horsemen to get to Hades of the Deep in the underworld. Right here. Cerberus guards Hades. There, now, Hades has the fifth horseman. If you don't, you guys don't know what I'm talking about, the book of Revelation is very clear. It's called, these are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It never names a fifth horse, but it does say that a fifth rider is coming behind them, and it is death. It's very interesting. So, uh, uh, also hidden in here is the sixth seal. I don't know if you guys see it, but it's the sixth seal. The sixth seal of the apocalypse in symbolism is right here right next to Cerberus and underneath and behind. Well, the four horsemen are raised up in the air and right there in front is the Phoenix. You got all my, all, all my, all my archaic veterans know what the Phoenix. You, you've seen all the images of Phoenix I've shown in all the architecture, what it means. That right there is May 2040, the Phoenix. One of these other images may be the fifth. The only thing we're missing here is the fifth seal. But the fifth seal is not events that happen on earth. The fifth seal is very unique. These are events that happen uh, somewhere where the souls of the dead have been quarantined and they're waiting they're waiting to make their exodus from the construct and they they appeal to God about hey man what we when are you, when is this going to be over when are you going to when are you going to uh let us out and all this and um it's, uh, the fifth seal concerns the altar of God full of souls. And he tell and God basically tells those souls, be patient for a little spell. Time, the time is almost near. That's the fifth seal. Then the sixth seal happens, which is the Phoenix. And like I said, this is Apollo and the four horsemen, his four horses. All right. In in that in that show, guys, remember, so so crazy. The purge election year. Look at this. Crazy. This movie's this movie's like almost eight and a half, nine years old. But the main tagline they kept saying over and over in the movie was "Keep America Great." Keep America Great. Almost sound almost sounds like "Make America Great Again." Keep America Great. Also in the Purge movies, we have we have oh uh, this. If you didn't screenshot this fast enough, you wouldn't even see it. But it just it's on it's on a feed for just a couple seconds, and it shows all this destruction during the purge, the purge, uh one of the purges in one of the purge movies. Almost missed that right there. 
Purge feed. Salem, Oregon. Eclipse passed right over that in 2017. Right there. Another thing that's interesting is this. The Purge movies had nothing to do with this, but this woman during the Purge is on a speakerphone and she's talking out loud while people are doing the Purge, killing each other and stuff. And she says, I'm doing God's work. He uses an earthquake, a virus. The masses nourish and flourish. I am the virus tonight. It's right there. Sorry, guys. I'm not making this up. The Purge franchise has nothing to do with this. Virus and earthquake does not appear anywhere in the in the front in the Purge franchise movies. So why did this woman make this speech, and why was there so much focus on it? Especially when these these movies are connected to this eclipse. So crazy! It's so crazy! So crazy! So I'm gonna show this chart, but I need to make sure. Chat's still going good. Mm. All right. Yeah, I'm on Twitter a lot. I see Pamela Pamela uh posted my Twitter. I'm on, I'm on X a lot. I engage in the chat a lot. I really don't engage a lot in the chat on my on the uh, YouTube community. I just read the post and, and and answer a few comments. But in X, I'm in there a lot. It's just easier to use. All right. So, I'm going to share. You guys have seen this chart. You guys already saw this chart. The eclipse, of, the eclipse of August 21st, 2017, right here, is precisely 2,422 days to the eclipse on Monday, 4824, right there. There's 2,422 days. I've showed this multiple times. Other channels are now, are now starting to show it. I've seen it on a few channels. You guys have sent me links to other channels that are share, sharing this. Uh, a real big channel shared it. I was kind of upset that they didn't cite their source, but it's okay. Information's getting out. So August 21st, 2017 was 1,211 days to this eclipse. This is the one that I brought to you guys' attention. Nobody else is talking about. 12, 14, 20 was the precise date for another total eclipse over America that also passed from the Pacific to the Atlantic over South America. On that exact day of the eclipse, December 14th, 2020, this is the exact date that the vaccine is first made publicly available. This is the exact day. Oh, this is also from, I'm talking about the vaccine that was issued from the Chesterfield, Missouri facility, which is owned by Pfizer. The shadow of the 2017 eclipse went right over Chesterfield, Missouri. I believe this one, I believe it's 90% totality from Chesterfield this time on Monday also. That's the Pfizer facility. On that exact date of December 14th, the Electoral College decided that Joe Biden was going to be president, not Donald Trump. Those are, those are two major events. That's three major events all right here at the same time, which is the epicentral date between these two big eclipses. It was this third, the second eclipse here. It's amazing. And then, of course, 4824, which we're waiting on, is Monday. That is, that is the crown that is going to be given to Apollo because Apollo Pharmacia's work on the first, the first seal broken, the first horseman, when that corona appears around the sun as the eclipse travels across America, Apollo Pharmacia's work is done. A crown is given to him. He's been given authority. The eclipse now, now begins the ride of the second horseman. And it's during the second horseman that the second seal will be broken. The work of Apollo Pharmacia is complete when this halo appears around the moon. Interpret that any way you want to. 
Now, <clears throat> here are the eclipses. Real, these, these, these large yellow rings are Olympiads. Each one of these large rings you see is an Olympiad. Look at the bottom here. Olympiad. Four-year Olympiad. Calendar of Apollo. This is the Olympiad system. In this calendar of Apollo right here, every four years is an Olympiad. This is the system that the elite are operating by. This is the Olympic system. So we see that the eclipse happened right here. Eight, eight twenty one seventeen. You guys can see the picture right there. Eight twenty one seventeen. There's there's the first eclipse passed over seven Salem's. One thousand two hundred eleven days to the second eclipse, which passed over South America right here. Twelve fourteen twenty. There's South American eclipse. It cut South America straight across from Pacific to Atlanta. It went over Chile and Argentina. It is the exact date Pfizer's Chesterfield facility released released its its version of the Jabberwocky, and it's it's the exact date that this moron sat in the Oval Office or was given the Oval Office, which is another one thousand two hundred and eleven days right here to Monday, the eclipse that's going to pass over all these none of us and Jonah. So we got all this. We're all we're all on the same page. There it is. Now, X marks the spot. That right there, a lot of people have talked about the New Madrid areas, New Madrid quakes, and we may be expecting something like that, but it's not it's not the focus. It's just something that happens with eclipses. Earthquakes happen with eclipses. But Remember, the eclipse is about giving Apollo a crown. That's what the that's what the corona is around around the sun. This means the work of the first seal is done. Now the second seal can be broken. The second the second horseman now rides, which is also going to be connected with. Uh, it's going to be connected with Apollo Pharmacia. So the Purge franchise movies. Look at this. Seven eighteen fourteen. Here's the Purge movie, The Purge, Anarchy, July 18th, 2014. It's 1,447 days right there to July 4th, 2018, when another Purge movie comes out. July 4th is a 1776 reference. There it is. It's a reference. But what's also a 1776 reference is the Purge film that comes out 1,447 days later from the first Purge film called Anarchy is called Election Year, the Purge Election Year. This is July 1st, 2016. Whole thing's just crazy. All this is just all these associations are just crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not the I'm sorry, it's uh the first purge. It's set, yeah, it's 1,447 days to the first purge right here, July 4th, which is a reference to 1776, July 4th, 2018. But if you take that same 1,447 days, you take that same 1,447 days and you just look at it in a different dimension of arithmetic, if you were to divide it by phi, the golden proportion, which is 1.618, it become 1,447 days is the same thing as 894 days. It's just a different dimension of arithmetic. 894 days, oh, uh, this second film, The Purge, is now 894 days exactly to 121420, which is the Joe Biden eclipse. You can call that the Biden eclipse because he cl he eclipsed the American people by surprise. It's the Pfizer eclipse right here, 12, 14, 20. The purge movies are connected to this eclipse as well. So we have the purge anarchy at the top over here. July 18th, 2014, the purge anarchy film is the same date. It's the same date that, that this movie came out, The Purge Anarchy. The same date this came out, Malaysian Airlines, Boeing 777, crashed where? 
It crashed over Ukraine. Who was on board of this Boeing 777? 298 doctors and researchers of AIDS and HIV. All of them going, going, either coming from or going to a conference. This one aircraft had 298 people on board that were doctors and researchers of AIDS and HIV, all in one field, and it went down over Ukraine. Yeah, I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that those doctors had to be eliminated. This is 2014. They had to be eliminated because they probably helped develop something. And they had to be removed since it was finished. Or they were removed from the field because they were the ones that would have been able to figure out in 2020 what kind of messy business was really going on. Either way, this is the exact date. These doctors were purged from the field on the same day this movie was released. So, 298 aboard. Oh, I'm sorry, 298 on board. Over 100 of them be all being AIDS and HIV researchers and advocates. That is not a coincidence. Yeah, I wrote here, if alive, they would have researched COVID. There's no doubt. This Purge Anarchy movie is 1776 days. 1776 days to 51919. I can't, I don't even know what I got here for 51919. Oh, there it is. That's the exact, this is the exact epicenter between, look at this guys, 4824. That's the eclipse on Monday. So the eclipse on Monday is 1776 days plus 1776 days after the Purge Anarchy movie was released and after all these doctors were killed over Ukraine. Now, what's in the middle? If you've got 1776 days uh, plus 1776 days, this is 3,552 days. Let's see what was in the middle. That was May 19th, 2019. Here's what was in the middle. Republican, first Republican raises issue of Trump impeachment. Trump threatens Iran with a cease to exist if it threatens the United States again. The douche bank, Dutch bank, douche bank, whatever, finds strange transactions between Trump and Jared Kushner. So this is interesting to me because Trump and Biden come up over and over in these in these in these eclipse narratives. So as I've shown in the in the prior videos. So cuz see. Uh, connected to 1214. Yeah, Trump and Biden are also connected to the 1214 2020 eclipse. That's when the Electoral College decided that they weren't going to vote for Trump. They voted for Biden. That's the exact midpoint there. Look at this. We've got this movie, The Purge Election Year. What's 2024? It's an election year. The first Purge movie was 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 the back. The setting was 2022. The second Purge movie, the setting was 2023. The third pur Purge movie, if you were to go by that precedent, would be concerning 2024. But that's not what they did. They jumped to 2040, and they called it election year. 2040 is a reference to the breaking of the seals. Here's election year right here. What is election year? It is 1,419 days to May 20 of 2020. 1,419 days. Why is that important? Because May 20 of 2020 is another 1,419 days to the eclipse that we're waiting on now, on Monday, April 8th. Now, for, in order for that to be important, we need to find out What's relevant about the Purge franchise and the Eclipse on Monday, which we've linked to Pfizer, we've linked to COVID, we, we've linked to the Jabberwocky, and the Purge franchise is about a purge. It masks it as violence, but it could be for other reasons. So let's look at 520, five, May 20 of 2020. What happened on that exact 
excuse me, what happened on that exact epicentral year uh, date? Got it right here. Film released on July 1st, 2016, 3,828 days before the eclipse on Monday, April 8th. 1,419 days after the film was May 20th, 2020, when the World Health Organization announces the first major spike in COVID cases causing panic. It's caused international panic. It was, it was, it was reporting cases more and more cases. But then all of a sudden, on May 20th, it reported a huge spike. After this event, you already know what happened after this. All of a sudden, they travel restrictions. Uh, uh, they, were, they were revoking visas, uh, mask mandates, all that stuff. So this is a... So the World Health Organization's announcement of this major spike on that date Count, it counts 1,419 days into the future till Monday when the eclipse occurs. <clears throat> so, let's see. <clears throat> oh, we're not done yet. So, in 2020, Apollo Pharmakia attacked mankind, the first horseman, first seal broken, on the Greek Olympiad calendar, wearing white with an arrow, Greek toxon. Now, on the next Olympiad, mankind is now attacked by Apollo Helios. The second seal breaks. Apollo's consort, Coronis, merges with Helios in the eclipse to form the corona. We have 4 8. April 8th, 20. I'm on the right over here. This is the eclipse date. This is Monday. April 8th. Wait a minute. It's supposed to be 2024. Yeah, it's supposed to be supposed to say 2024, but it's April 8th. Should be 2024. Total eclipse, North America passes over seven Ninevehs. Jonah darkens Chesterfield. Uh, where Pfizer may, made the Jabberwocky. Uh, at the epicenter of totality for both eclipses is the new Madrid area. Nineveh, connected, Nineveh is connected to Pfizer and 70, 1776 Empire. Remember, Pfizer as a company was founded in 1849. Also in 1849 is specifically 1849, the cuneiform tablets of Ashurbanipal's library were found and discovered. They tell the whole Barsag tablet story of the eclipse and all the Assyrian eponyms and all that, all that material. It's amazing. You just can't make this stuff up. That's why history is so fascinating. You ain't got to make up, make up anything. It already has interesting things. So here are three more mathematical patterns leading to uh, April 8th, Monday. Here are three more on the bottom. January 30th, 2020, the WHO announces coronavirus outbreak, 1,530 days till Monday, the eclipse. 153 is a divisor of 2448. My archaics veterans, new people are not going to get this. My archaics veterans know all these numbers. You know that, the, that 2448 of the old world's calendar was our year of 1447 B.C., 1447 BC is the year of plagues, the 10 plagues on Egypt and the exodus, the people left Egypt because of the plagues. Now, there's the number 1447 again. It's also linked to the Purge franchise, like I just showed you, 1447 days between Purge movies. That's not an accident. It's not an accident. February 11th, 2020, coronavirus is called COVID-19. Exactly 1,518 days or 138 times 11 before the eclipse on Monday. 138 is Phoenix darkness. And the number 11 is the number of disorder. 
like I said, this a lot of this a lot of this mathematical stuff is for only from our case veterans. They're the only ones that have seen all that this research. April 30th, 2020. The Trump administration announces Operation Warp Speed. COVID-19 vax 1,440 days to the day after the eclipse. Ramadan of Islam is also over the day after the eclipse. The day after the eclipse is also the first day of the Ugadi New Year of the Hindi calendar, Hindu calendar. Remember, I told you in my prior video, guys, in the calendrics, I'm seeing events start rolling the day after the eclipse. So, <clears throat> oh, just so interesting here because 1,440 days, this is not an arbitrary number, guys. It's 144 times 10. 10 is the number of totality, and 144 is, is basically, it's, it's, a, it's a phi number. It's a golden proportion number. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's when a cycle, it, it, what's interesting about it is, is 144 is a cycle times a cycle. Cycle and circle are the same, are the same word when you go back in etymology back far enough, but it's a, it's a cycle times a cycle. It's the closure of a cycle. This is 1440, 12 times 12. So that's that chart right there. I think, I, I think I've exhausted these charts. You guys saw this. I posted this earlier. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Luke 17, 33. You know what? Maybe that biblical passage was talking about something else, but it is in the context of the last days. So I don't know. I don't know. But in what, in what other scenario have you ever seen where somebody who has lost everything, their ability to make money, family members, friends, uh, their business, they lost all these things and yet they preserved their life. And that other people who wanted to save their job, save their marriage, save their family relationships, save, save their friendships, save their bank account. So they went ahead and agreed to something, even if they didn't really want to do it. And yet they're not with us today. They're not even alive anymore. Yeah. It's crazy. Luke 17, 33, brought to you by Pfizer. Right there in the middle. There's another one, Path of Totality, July 2nd, 2019. <clears throat> That's a totally different eclipse right there. But just like North America had two eclipses, so did South America. It's crazy. I showed you all these. Let me get out of here. Get back in here, stop sharing. Check my chat, make sure everything's going right. Yeah, like I said earlier, earlier we still got more to go through. But like I said earlier, guys, uh, if you go to Podia, get any of my free downloads, just go ahead and sign up for the email list. Email the email list. I will use that to tell everybody where I go in the event. Things get real dicey in 2024. I'm gonna tell you now. As soon as they ask me to be quiet, or as soon as they ask me not, to, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. All right, let's see. Besides, I've been thinking lately, and I can do it at the same time I do YouTube, but I've been really thinking lately to go ahead and put Big John on BitChute and go ahead and upload 700 archaics videos to BitChute and just go ahead and start spreading the archaics footprint. It's been on my mind lately. Maybe Rumble too. All right, so done with that. <clears throat> so yeah, it's it's uh as far as far as what I wanted to present about the first and second seal, how the how the corona is 
it, it's the end of the first seal. It is literally, literally the last statement of the first seal. It is the transition into the second seal when the eclipse occurs. Oh, uh, how how the focus is on North America. But I'm telling you now, if you want to, I haven't really done my 2024 predictions yet because 2024 just started. You know, January and February are not a part a part of 2024. So I'm uh I'm gonna end up doing it, but I can give you a little bit right now. I'm telling you now, it is the Olympics when all when, when all this chaos is gonna go off. And I think that this this eclipse is gonna come and go just fine. And there may be some minor hiccups here and there. There may be some 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 stuff going on, but but I don't think that the real criminal act of that's going to transpire during the eclipse is even going to be understood or known until weeks later. Weeks later. Yeah, because I, I believe they're going to be using the very fact that so many Americans have concentrated themselves into a narrow strip from north to south on the nation and that the moon is going to be going to be whatever the moon is. Because remember, I don't believe the moon's a solid. I believe the moon amplifies things that are already in you. This is the origin of lunacy and lunatics. Yeah, I don't believe the moon harms a flora, chlorophyll-based life forms, but it does carbon-based or it does biological, especially marsupial and mammalian life forms are very negatively affected by the moonlight. And so I don't know about, I don't know about fish, amphibians, reptiles. I don't know, but marsupials and mammals are, are, are affected negatively by moonlight and uh, an eclipse is going to be an amplification event. So I just don't know. It's, it, it's crazy, but we'll see. We'll see. But I believe events that the real chaotic events of this year are going to happen later and they're going to be terrorist attacks they're going to be very coordinated i believe they're going i believe that they're going to attack infrastructure like these bridge like the bridge deals are just the beginning boats hitting bridges these infrastructure attacks are going to happen first after the infrastructure attacks they'll probably attack businesses and places like restaurants and stuff like that just just to for shock value and then when all law enforcement and EMS is all positioned, the military is positioned at, at, at all the government places, at all at all the places of, of business and corporations and, and public places, that's when they'll change their focus and they'll hit residences. They'll hit neighborhoods. Remember, it's all to take peace from the earth. So, yeah, guys, it's but you know what? I believe we're going to be just fine. We're going to move right through it. Um, just like we survived 2020, we're going to survive 2024 and 2025. Uh, are, are there major events going to happen? Of course. Are they going to happen on the day of the eclipse? If so, it's going to be an earthquake. It's going to be something. It's going to be a psyop. Whatever whatever happens on the eclipse day is going to be a psyop. It's going to be psyop. Just the real events are later in 2024, as I predicted 10 months ago. And it has everything to do with, with getting Americans on board with a war against the Middle East. Yeah, that's what's happening. It's crazy. Yeah, so I mean, remember guys, everybody's reporting, uh, everybody's reporting on the elite building bunkers and all this stuff. Listen, it takes a long time to build a bunker. It takes a long time to do all that. They got 16 years, but actually they're going to be down in there in 2036. So really, they got 12 years. But all this fear programming put out there into the field and all that, uh, the building of bunkers and all that, they want you to believe they're building bunkers for events that are happening in real time now. It's not true. Those bunkers and those underground domes and facilities and deep earth biospheres are being constructed and prepared for the Phoenix phenomenon in May of 2040. But they will be sealed in those, in those, in those uh, subterranean cities and complexes years before that. Years before that. Also, CERN activating all of a sudden. You know what? It could be a distraction. It could be a psyop. It could be part of the part of the ritual. But the very fact that they told us, the very fact that they disclosed that to me is a red flag. It's like, why would you even tell us if you're really going to do something sinister? Why tell us? Why would the government tell you to prep? The government is always telling you not to store water and food and all these things and go to the store and don't store too much stuff. It's a fire hazard. And they're totally against preppers. They raid preppers. They prosecute preppers. What the hell? Now, all of a sudden, it's cool. 
yeah, you guys need to go ahead and stack up your own your food and your water. What? Total, total revert, total reversal here. And yet, that's what they're doing. Therefore, I'm into I'm anticipating nothing. Or psyops. The true events of 2020, the breaking of the seals, aren't until later in the year. NASA's going to release three rockets. What are they going to do? They're going to spray some type of mist in the sky? Okay. Does that mist have something to do with Apollo Pharmacia? And is the moon going to be an amplification event while all those people are in that strip of darkness who have come all around the United States to visit this area? And then the day after the eclipse, what are they going to do? They're going to take whatever they picked up in that strip of darkness, and they're going to take it back to all their homes throughout America. That's what they're going to do. Remember, I told you in my last video, an opportunity has been created, and I don't like it. I don't like what I'm seeing. So NASA NASA actually tells us that, 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 that they're going to launch three rockets, tells us that the, the program is called APEP. Come on, guys. Ancient Egyptian serpent of darkness is crazy. And, and, and what's fur, further crazy is APEP first appeared in, Egy in Egyptian text on the coffin texts. It's crazy. There's nothing in a coffin but a dead body. So then we have then we have this disclosure. We're already being prepped by dumbasses like Bill Gates, who doesn't even have a medical background. We're already being prepped to expect the rollout of disease X. What? So the very fact that we're these disclosures are coming forward are all red flags to me. It's all red flags. It's all fear programming. It's all it's all it's all distraction. It's crazy. One thing that hasn't really been talked about a lot, which uh, which I noticed in my other video, was the alien invasion psyop. We've been waiting on that twenty years. When they're going to roll that card out, and then all of a sudden, with the eclipse and all these, there's every narrative in the world is attached to the eclipse. It's crazy. Every narrative in the world is attached to the eclipse. Technically. Monday is the third day of darkness. There's a lot of narratives attached to that. But it seems like the invasion of aliens is off the table right now. That's a red flag to me. Why? Why? So, warnings of possible increased CME activity. Ben Davidson of Suspicious Observers, he's telling you every single day of all the threats from the sun. Sun's ejecting all the coronal mass inje uh, ejections. One's going this way, one's going that way. We're passing through We're passing through a radiation field. I mean, that's his thing. He gets all his material from NASA. He stays on top of this stuff. I don't believe any of it's real. I, don't, I believe NASA's a psyop. But still, he believes it's real. He's steady putting this out. And so are all, all the others. But 100% of all their data comes from one source, NASA. NASA. NASA's putting all this all this material out. Oh, who else is who else is involved in in uh the sending up of the rockets? APEP. Oh yeah, it's NASA. So I'm uh these are all red flags to me. These are all red flags that are telling me that we are being prepped for something anti anticlimactic. Yeah, to to wire up all this stuff, get everybody involved, and then nothing happens. Because they need that energy for something real that's going to happen later in the year. And they want to use that, that vacuum of activity where everybody's quiet and looking around like, damn, nothing happened. They want to use that to their advantages as well and pointing the fingers at, at all these people to discredit them. They threw out all the carrots. People picked them up, bit them, and then turn around and put that material out there, that fear programming. And now a lot of people are going to lose credibility. A lot of people. So that's another, that's another, it, it's to me, just, it seems like this is all one huge big psyop. And the very fact that earthquakes can be generated only adds to the psyop. Who cares if, I mean, who cares if the sun darkens? That's what an eclipse is. Uh, earthquakes have happened with eclipses for thousands of years. It's been documented. It's in many ancient texts. So Pliny, Pliny did a good job of documenting those. So there's no mystery to me. If several earthquakes happen on the day of the eclipse, it's still no mystery to me. It has nothing to do with Apollo Pharmacia becoming Apollo Helios after receiving the crown, which is the eclipse itself. Now, now the elite move on to their next agenda. Apollo Helios, Helios now attacks the human family and takes peace from the earth in an entirely different way. 
One is going to be small arms warfare, residential warfare. Uh, it's going to be a bunch of small arms activity, infrastructure attacks and all that. But at the same time, it is a continuation and an amplification of what the first seal was about. Yeah, they don't care if nobody else wants to ever take another Jabberwocky. If you don't want to take a Jabberwocky home, that's fine. It's your business. They don't care because they already did what they needed to do. So, <clears throat> all right. Um, yeah, warning. Uh, all, all the all the warnings that we're getting on from the municipal level to the state level, from from mayors to governors. Warnings of interruptions of police and emergency response team services. This is all purge narrative. It's all purge narrative again. It's like they're fulfilling a role that's, that Hollywood projected. Yeah, telling us all this stuff. Again, adding to the fear of porn. Oh, be, uh, they're telling us to be ready for preparations for communication disruptions. Listen, the greatest time ever to conduct psyops, the greatest time ever to conduct major widespread operations is in an infra information blackout because nobody's communicating and nobody can really know what's happening somewhere else. Yeah, the school and business closures, the government building closures, all these add to the PSYOP. They all add to the expectation of major events that will not happen. So it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. All this all this uh, school and business closures and stuff, it didn't happen in prior eclipses. Students went out and looked at the eclipse. Yeah, so it's just, it's a... Uh, it's very, it's very unusual. And then the federal municipal authorities are all preparing for a possible biohazard. Again, fear programming. It's all fear programming. It's crazy. So another thing that I find unusual, not just the alien invasion psyop, but for the past four or five years, everybody's, uh, all social media, it's all exploded about the 5G towers. But man, it's real quiet about those 5G towers. Everybody's real quiet about it right now. Nobody's no nobody's drawing attention to the to these massive arrays that have been set up everywhere. I'm I'm just gonna tell you like I'm gonna tell you like I see it. I would not be surprised if during an amplification event, all the 5G towers are doing something just along that narrow strip of shadow. So Apollo Pharmacaia can be blamed for something when it was actually 5G towers that provided that amplification. So because if 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 everything can be traced to that narrow band of shadow, there it is. It's the ultimate, ultimate criminal act. It's the ultimate criminal act. You can always blame the eclipse for, some, for something that you had already set up. <clears throat> now, um, let's see. We have to take in consideration that the level of our technology today and nanotechnology could be so incredibly advanced as to have Trojan programming in there that only responds to certain external environmental stimuli. I'm going to tell you now, we've already, we've already created that technology. That technology does exist. We don't quite know exactly what Apollo Pharmacaia put in the Jabberwockies. We don't know, but those Jabberwockies are there. So I'm going to say that we need to consider that the moon is a negative light. Its illumination has been measured and it's deteriorative. It's not generative like the sun. It's deteriorative. We also know that the moon is holographic. We have, we have pictures and video of stars appearing in the dark part of the moon but the moon is supposed to be a solid. So no, we're not all. The moon is, the moon is holographic. The Russians have always published that. Uh, they know that there is nothing one fourth the size of our world that can hang in the sky like that without crashing into it. It's impossible. It would have to be eggshell thin to stay, to stay suspended up there like that, but it's not, it's not, it's just holographic. It's not even there. So if it's holographic and not there, then when it passes over the surface of the sun, Apollo, something else is actually happening. The darkness is something else. If the moon is truly more like a portal or a lens, like a lot of ancient traditions claim, 
There are traditions about the jinn. They came through the door of the moon. So if the moon is a lens, a holographic lens, then the shadow that appears on the surface of the world is sunlight that has been converted into something dark and amplified to create that shadow of the moon. This is why all the animals shut the hell up during an eclipse. Insects, animals, birds, dogs, everything silent. This is why the wind dies during an eclipse. This is why people have a really funny, weird feeling when they're in the path of totality. Now, I'm going to tell you now that across the board, as I told you in my prior videos on, on the eclipse, across the board, the ancients were very specific about uh, uh, eclipses. There's nothing positive about them. Thousands of years of traditions of doing smudging ceremonies before and after uh, eclipses, ritual purification baths, throwing away any food that was uncovered during the eclipse, taking full baths once the eclipse is over, not going outside until the sun comes back. This is universal. All, all these cultures all over the world. We don't have any traditions of any of any cultures in, in the ancient world or even up to the Middle Ages that, that ran outside and had a party during an eclipse. We don't have any. Well, we got a Hollywood movie. Uh, uh, we got several Hollywood movies that talk about eclipses, and the, the ideas attached to them are not beneficial at all. Again, every night shift nurse will tell you the truth about a full moon and how it amplifies something that's already in some people that are on the cusp of already losing their shit. They become lunatics. Lunacy is a real thing. Luna comes from the moon. So it's a, it's a very real thing, guys. One of my, um, let me find, I got notes on, I got notes on movies. Okay, you guys remember 1986, Little Shop of Horrors? Everybody remembers that movie. Little Shop of Horrors, 1986. Yeah, so an eclipse, a solar eclipse happens. And uh, this guy's shop, this big alien-like plant appears in this guy's shop, the Little Shop of Horrors. It, it was an eclipse. As soon as the eclipse happened, this plant appeared in this guy's shop. You remember that? It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Little Shop of Horrors was a weird movie, though. I, I would like to watch it again. It's, I haven't seen it since the 80s. It's been a long time. Um, there's another movie called Dreams Take Flight. Um, I think it's a series Sailor Moon or something. I don't remember. Eclipse. Sailor Moon 2000, a solar eclipse releases a gang that attempts to use the energy of the sun to free an evil queen from a mirror prison. It almost sounds like 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 a, a Superman when they put those, like the dark satellite. They put the, it's crazy. Oh, concerning the dark satellite, the seven kings in a, imprisoned in an object that that's that's trapped. They're trapped in the sky, but they're released in 2052. Yeah, guys, I've talked about that on my channel a lot. The research of Charles Burgoyne from the 1880s, who talks about the ancient ones are going to return on the earth once more. They're imprisoned in the dark satellite. I've got the chronology of the dark satellite, how it caused all these major, major disruptions throughout human history. Well, in the movie Hellboy, 2004, you guys remember Hellboy, uh, a lunar eclipse. Uh, uh, ha, ha, allows Hellboy to open the gates of hell to release the seven gods of chaos. Where does that, that sound familiar? Yeah, it's, again, it's an eclipse, an eclipse being used to open a portal. And it's crazy. <coughs> Remember, the book of Revelation is about opening a portal to the abyss in order to release Apollyon, the destroyer. And once he's released after the breaking of the seven seals, once he's released, it, it takes all seven seals to be broken for him to be released. And then uh, once he's released, that's when the Great Tribulation begins. That's the narrative. That's the Book of Revelation narrative. Yeah, so, so that's, my, uh, that's my presentation, guys.
It's it's this is what four eclipse videos, all the research done to four eclipse and, and, and presented in four eclipse videos is is that if anything unfolds on Monday, it's it's psyop or a natural occurrence of an earthquake that goes with the that's not even a mystery to me. If it happens or doesn't happen, I don't even, I don't it's not it's just it's neither here nor there. It has nothing to do with the actual prophetic narrative that's unfolding in the book of Revelation. The the eclipse is the crown given to to the uh, to the first horseman. Basically, when he when his ride is over, and the second horseman Apollo Helios is allowed to ride in as soon as the moon moves away from the sun and the sun is clear again, the second horseman has begun to ride. So I'm not looking for major events. I'm looking for major announcements the day of and the day after, like April 8th, April 9th. I'm looking for major announcements attached to the eclipse, uh, different things like that. But the actual events of the second seal, the breaking of the second seal, the riding of the second horseman, it's just like the first one. 2020, it was a gradual buildup. Here it is in 2024. It's a whole new four-year Olympiad. The elite are, again, a slow build toward the Olympics. You already, you guys already know my Olympic predictions. Isometrically, it, it mirrors 1972. What happened in 1972? Terrorists machine-gunned Israelis at the Olympics. It's all going down again, guys. We live in a giant hologram. And once you understand the arithmetic that attaches to the holography, events have predictive value. Yeah, I don't want, this is a two hours, six minutes. I don't want to go too far. I've already said everything that I, I set out to say. But uh, it's going to be real interesting, guys. It's going to get real interesting in the next month or two. Just crazy. Hope to see a bunch of y'all in Florida. Yeah, I'm still still planning to go to Florida. No matter what's happening, I'm going to Florida. But yeah, all the crazy chaos, guys. Remember, I have a video coming out. I'm going to show you guys August 9th. But I believe I believe July and August during the Olympics, that's when shit's going to hit the fan. Shit's going to hit the fan. <clears throat> and I've been saying that since my videos released that information 10, 11 months ago. I am legend was released in December 14th, 2020. Billy Seven, you're like the second person to tell me that, but I have not looked at that myself to verify. I don't disbelieve you, but I've made that mistake before. You run with people's information, and it was wrong. I will look into that, but I am legend. Wow. December 14th, that's huge. For those of you who don't realize how huge it is, if it's true, <clears throat> that I Am Legend was released December 14th, 2020. That lines up with when the Electoral College voted Biden as president and Trump out. That's the same date that the Pfizer Chesterfield facility released its Jabberwocky to the public. It's the same date of the South American eclipse. It is the exact epicentral date between the eclipse Monday and the first eclipse that passed over seven Salem's in 2017. That's amazing to add that data point that I am legend. Why? Because the movie I am, I am legend was about a Jabberwocky that was given to the public and it went bad. It went real bad. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Of even more, even more significant uh, coincidence for me is that that movie was Will Smith. And Will Smith was in a movie I watched for the very first time last night. Last night I watched a movie uh, called uh, Hancock. It's the very first time I, see, I saw that movie. I don't watch a lot of movies, guys. Maybe once a week, twice a week, I'll sit down and, and just completely zone out and and slow my brain down to watch a movie but other than that I'm, I'm just not a movie guy it's crazy so i do have a uh podcast i've got a podcast with david nino rodriguez tomorrow on his channel we've already done one for 
on Nino's Corner TV. We were going to do it for YouTube, but we started talking deep about all these things I'm talking. I'm, I'm sharing with you right now. And he decided, you know what? Well, you know what? Because we started talking about a lot of other stuff too. He said, you know what? This is going to this is going to have to stay off YouTube. I said, cool, all right. But he invited me. He said, hey man, Sunday, would you like to come back? before the eclipse Sunday and talk about that one thing you'd share with me. I said, yeah. So we're going to do a video about this new disclosure because I think it has a lot to do with taking peace from the earth in the near future. This new disclosure is how the establishment is right now trying to normalize a condition where you see people's faces as demonic. That's really compelling. It's very interesting. It's a psyop within a psyop. It's crazy. But yeah, guys, we're going to be talking about that tomorrow and the implica and the implications. You know, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. David Ike woke me up from my Christian slumber in the in the '90s and really jarred me. And I'm going to tell you now, when I read his book, I saw lizards everywhere. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Anyway, I love you guys. It's time for me to to wind down. I'm, I may go watch that that movie, that movie. Uh, I am Legend. I may I may do it. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I will figure it out. Anyway, I'll holler at you, and uh, we'll probably do a Q and A next. Pro probably uh, after the eclipse on Monday, we'll probably do a Q and A. Or we might just do situation reports if you want to do that Monday night or Tuesday morning. We'll do situation reports or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm trying to figure this out.